Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Weekender. I am joined in the studio today by Jerry and Ben. I'm not saying Ben and Jerry because it just confuses you. Uh, first thing, we have some updated news for everybody. So the tickets for the Flames of War D-Day boot camp are out there in the wild for everybody now. And one very important thing, if you are a non-backstager and you are picking up one of these tickets, we are going to be giving you six months of free backstage. That's very nice. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's a nice little bonus, you know. Yeah, you can get in there and see what everybody's saying about you whenever you're not around. <laughs> oh, come we on. We talk about you all, all the time. Oh, no. Oh. Lies. lies and deception. You'll never know. You're not backstage. <laughs> am I telling the truth? Go figure. Yeah. No, I, I am looking forward to this one. I've been chatting to the guys over at Battlefront about what's being brought along and stuff. There is going to be tons of miniatures for people to play with we're working on oh, some yeah. really great gaming tables uh in tandem with those guys so they're working on some of the stuff for the tables we're working on some of the stuff for the table so it's a little bit different to normal which i'm going to find really interesting it also lands pretty much right after uk games expo and i'm looking forward to the expo as well just because there's so much there cool yeah, yeah. Right, uh, that's all we have for updates this week but ben you've been out trawling the darkest deepest nastiest recesses of the internet for some news what have you found <laughs> uh yeah so the first piece of news is neither nasty or horrible it's actually quite nice and lovable because it's lord of the rings uh and it's from the guys at games workshop and this is the announcement of a new plastic kit that we kind of had seen uh previewed a little bit in the past i think it was during one of their big sort of open days they did it to warhammer world and this is for merry and eowyn forward slash Dernhelm, uh, if you're going to be riding into battle incognito. Uh, for those people that are going to be playing as the Rohirrim, if they're diving into battles at Pelennor Field and the like as well. Um, so yeah, it's got a new plastic model that includes uh, Eowyn and Merry both on foot and mounted. And the cool thing about this kit as well is that um, Merry himself can actually be removed from the mounted version of her. So if you want to have it so that it's just Eowyn riding into battle, then you've got a good option there, which is really cool. This also came on the back of some additional news about them revamping the battle company book. Now, Battle Companies is the book that Games Workshop put together, which sort of looks at um, sort of very, very small skirmish-based gameplay within the world of Lord of the Rings, uh, and The Hobbit as well, actually. Uh, so you've basically got the idea of like a captain and then a whole bunch of their warriors that fight alongside them. And they've sort of redeveloped this for the new version of the game, which came out uh, last year. And also thrown in some extra bits and pieces as well. So uh, as well as the existing warbands that you would have known from the previous book, they've also included two new ones as well. Uh, I think it actually might be eight new ones or something like that, actually. But there are now the Dead of Dunharrow. So if you really want to play as those ghost guys, you've got some really cool options there, which is very cool. And they've also thrown in two different styles of campaigns. Now, you can either play your games as sort of standard sort of pick up a play style adventures where you just play on the tabletop between two warbands, or you can dive in and do something more of a, like a, in a campaign. So you've got either the map-based campaign, which it will be sort of focused around the idea of you fighting against both the forces of good and evil, trying to take control of areas of Middle-earth, which I thought was pretty awesome. Or you've also got options to play through a narrative campaign, and this one is all focused around the idea of the Blue Mountains and sort of your trek up there to look for lost treasures and things like that. So if you'd like the idea of where Thorin went when he was in exile with the rest of the dwarves from the Lonely Mountain, you can go and explore that sort of area of Eriador as well, which I thought was really, really cool. But yeah, some really good stuff coming for Middle-earth, and it's really nice to see the game growing and expanding and hopefully if they're doing new warbands for a lot of these uh, sort of um, these different factions in the game maybe we'll start to see a lot more of those old metal models come back maybe a few new ones as well in plastic i know they've actually been talking about doing dunn endings as well which could be pretty cool so yeah very awesome stuff i am quite surprised at how well the lord of the rings and the, the hobbit game has actually stood the test of time you know the way some ips get a lot older yeah. and then mm. just the fan base completely drops off because the new shiny things out yeah but the, mm. the fan base in this case mm. are people who were fans of the book and the film mm. yeah mm -hmm. and, and that stood the test of time for 70 80 years now yeah. you mm. know that fan base isn't going away as mm. much as we can try they just keep <laughs> springing up like those and skeletons it, from jason and the argonauts yeah the interesting thing about it as well is that i think and i i think a few people would also agree with me especially those who like the middle earth games as well is that it's actually one of the best rule systems i think the games actually have ever created yeah um it's very fluid very easy they used it in other games as well for the more home historicals license which i'm sure a lot of people know about but legends of the old west and that kind yeah. of thing yeah, yeah I played that. but 
But um, yeah, I just think that rules mechanic and the way that it sort of was able to replicate both larger scale battles and those smaller conflicts between sort of a handful of models is really, really interesting. And I think battle companies is where that focus should really be when you're playing this kind of game. Not to say that you should, you know, only play that and not anything else. But I think just those real, real personal struggles between a fellowship or a band of warriors is a really cool thing to sort of look down on when you're doing Middle Earth gaming. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's one of those, if the miniatures are good, Mm -hmm. and they are and the rule set is solid and it is mm -hmm. it will it, it's the same as um blood bowl or necromunda who yeah existed for probably over a decade when gw were doing nothing with it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because people wanted to play it yeah um so the fact that they're actually going back and people can now get into it who maybe have only had either friends playing it or uh, heard about it through the internet mm -hmm. so yeah. it's it's good to have it also the campaign system is excellent because i think most games should have a campaign system yeah um you see i, I really do like sort it. of legacy games that you can play game to game and see mm -hmm. things grow evolve yeah. and change it'll be interesting to, to see how the map based one goes is it just mm -hmm. is it a specific map yeah. that they're including in the book or is it just the here's how you run a map based campaign mm -hmm. go, go find a map because finding yourself a map isn't tricky no yeah i believe they've put like a sort of like a sample version of it in the new battle companies book um which i believe is all sort of done up as hex grids and that kind of thing so if you if you remember things like mighty empires back in the oh, day yeah. and that kind of thing mm -hmm. you've got some really cool options there so yeah. very cool and well played to them for keeping it going for the fan base mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's next ben uh, so next up we've got some more stuff from Games Workshop and this is the announcement of some extra bits and pieces for uh, Warhammer Underworld. Um, so you'll know that they've been expanding this and growing different warbands and things like that but their new, two new ones are out for pre-order this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, the first of these are Yathari's Guardians who are the Sylvaneth addition to the Warhammer Underworlds. So we've got a really cool look at this, this sort of like fey faction within the world and sort of developing them as characters as well which I thought was really cool. I've always said that I really quite like the sort of mix that they've done between nature and that sort of fey elven ancestry that the Wood Elves always had in Warhammer um, Fantasy. And while obviously there's not a lot of sort of crossover between the two of them apart from things like tree men and, 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 so that, and that kind of thing I really enjoy what they've done that kind of like ghostly spirit aspect to these uh, characters as well here and I think it's a really dynamic and interesting looking warband as well so it'll be really interesting to see how it plays uh, I know Games Workshop have done a couple of sort of preview articles over on their Warhammer community blog that you can go and check out where they look at these in a bit more depth and stuff like that but um, as well as being fun to play hopefully these, these are going to be amazing to paint as well and I may end up just buying this set just to paint them up just like I have done with the Fire Slayers I think that might be pretty cool. Mm. Um, as well as that, they've also um, shown off the uh, Thundrix Privateers. So if you like yourself some Caradron Overlords and some Duardin from the world of uh, Age of Sigma, dwarves to everybody else, uh, you've got some really cool options here for some treasure hunters who are going out to go and explore uh, the Mirrored City. The interesting thing about these guys uh, is that it seems to be a very much sort of focused around the idea of range. Uh, like a lot of the warbands either are very, very me melee focused or a, a sort of like a split almost mix between melee and range. Whereas this one seems to very much rely on that idea of ranged combat. So that'll be very interesting to see how that works, especially with the whole idea of their heavy armor and their weird experimental guns and all that kind of the things as well. So something tells me they've been listening to uh, Skaven, maybe. But uh, yeah, that would be a bad th <laughs> that would be a bad thing to say to a dwarf. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not Skaven. <laughs> Tech right there never ever ever say that although uh, i was actually that depends how many times they explode and kill your friends so, yeah it's the only way to tell us to fire them off <laughs> well i mean like i i was talking to ryan about these two warbands and he's definitely up for the sylvaneth one he picked up the the skeleton set yeah. and then this was nice he was just like but i have skeletons Did you, what do you and now he can paint both of them in a strange weird style that will yeah. make john cry so oh, don't even start i think that's key cool. really is as many different types of glitter as he can find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, the interesting other thing that came out of the news uh, last weekend for Engage Workshop is that they do um, a series of store opening models. Um, so whenever a new store opens or it moves or it's relocated, etc., etc., um, they have a range of models that you can go and pick up to sort of celebrate that store coming to, into existence. And so they announced one of their new ones, which is the Stormcast you can see there called Beric the Indomitable, or Indomitable, that's uh, the way to say it, I suppose. And um, they did point out that he has, seems to have decapitated an orc or an Uruk with a hammer. And how exactly did he do that? With the god power of Sigmar, of course, was their answer. Uh, so yeah, very cool. They've also got a new one, another one there that has been out for a while called Lena Stormspire. And I believe they also do two 40K models as well. There's a Space Marine Captain and a Chaplain as well. So yeah. if you like the idea of getting some sort of uh, cool 
exclusive miniatures from lots of store openings and things like that, just make sure to watch out for one that might pop up in your local area. So, yeah. I do have a question here. So between these two characters, they're both yes. standing on an orc's head. Is it the same <laughs> orc's head? Yeah. <laughs> you know, did, did she chop its head off, let him pose, and then say, no, I need to pose myself? No, because the one above has got part of the shoulder and the arm attached, uh, see. Wh where she's just got the head. I see. I see. Clearly got the proper clean cut to her kill. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is one other bit of news for Games Workshop that people should be aware of, is that over on the Warhammer community page at the minute, they are doing their big survey. Yes. So basically collecting all the information they can of what their gamers are up to, what they're enjoying, what they think they can do to make things better, which I think is something really nice for them to be doing. Yeah, it's very, very cool indeed. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see Games Workshop still reaching out to people, which is pretty awesome. Mm. So, yeah. mm. Uh, so next up in the news, uh, we're still almost staying with the Mortal Realms here because we're looking to some news from the guys at Playfusion. Uh, they've been able to take Age of Sigmar Champions, which is the very cool um, collectible card game with a digital component to it, onto Nintendo Switch. Um, so if you hadn't had enough of playing it on the mobile and the PC, you could now play it on, uh, on, on Switch as well phone but not running the battery down and not being able to text anybody because you've been playing Age of Sigmar Champions too much but yes <laughs> um, so yeah you've got, you've got some new options there with a whole bunch of uh, additional solo campaigns that have been added into the mix uh, so you can play against the computer a lot more and play against the AI and challenge yourself mm. you've also got the versus modes in there and of course the new set Savagery which was released I think it was two weeks ago now is now available in the app for you to use so you've got additional stuff for order like the Sylvaneth which are very very cool mm. that's my deck of choice at the moment you've also got Nurgle for K Chaos, uh, I believe there's some additional stuff for death in there as well, where they've sort of tweaked around with the idea of ghouls and ghosts and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, I think so, Destruction got some gear in there too. Yeah, Destruction got the ogres, which is pretty awesome. So if you like the idea of playing around with those guys, you've got some pretty mm. cool stuff there too. Yeah. So. One thing I will say for this, I remember whenever they first made the, the announcement for this port across to the Switch, they actually ran a very cool competition on their Facebook page. So it's, it's worth going and checking it out, giving it a like. They ran a contest where they were picking two winners, I believe it was, and you were getting a Nintendo Switch and the game on it, which I thought was a really cool little prize for them to throw up for everybody. Cool. Yeah, the guys that uh, play Pigeon do a lot of really nice community outreach stuff, and they are very, very active in there as well. So if you want to get involved with them on Twitter and Facebook and things like that, they're, they're always willing to see what kind of funny things you're doing at the moment for champions and things. So, yeah. <laughs> that, and anytime they're at a show, they do massive sort of sit down and play sets where you can come, yeah, they do. Or come over to them, sit down, have someone run you through the game, and actually just get you a feel for the way the mechanics and stuff work, which I think is great. Mm. Right, what else, Ben? Uh, so next up, we're going to look at the work from uh, Sarissa Precision. Uh, this is for, one of the, for you guys out there that like your historical stuff. So this is a new range of terrain that they developed for you people who are playing your feudal Japanese games. So you might be playing something like Test of Honor, uh, or Ronin, for example. Maybe you're playing Kensai or Tori and all those kind of games as well. There are a lot more of them out there, and I already know that I've forgotten some of them because people already said on Facebook, hey, you've missed out X game and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I know they exist. There are lots of them out there, and Japanese stuff is very cool. But anyway, this is a new set of terrain based on the idea of a mountain village. Um, so if you're not quite keen on the idea of playing through all the cities and stuff like we normally see with all their very, very nice white walls and bright reds and that kind of thing, you can head off into the rural idylls of, of uh, Japan and fight through a mountain village instead. Uh, as part of the collection, they've developed uh, a set of hovels and an animal shelter set, which is pretty cool. Uh, they've also got a farmhouse, uh, an elder's hut, and a workshop too. Just to point out, with these uh, sort of images and previews you're seeing here, they do not come with the basing material and all that kind of thing, and all the additional work that's been done to the thatch. Uh, you just get the sort of like buildings themselves and you sort of build them up if you like but this gives you a really cool idea of sort of somewhere to start when it comes to this kind of thing might be pretty cool uh, if you're looking to do something like a little bit of a seven samurai style affair so you're looking to defend a mountain village against bandits or something like that that could be kind of cool but uh, yeah some awesome new terrain coming out from the guys at Sarissa you know what we clearly need to do for this if we get it in build it up find a miniature that looks like Tom Cruise and do the last samurai as a no. campaign no <laughs> Oh, no. Why? <laughs> Destroying my happiness. Two reasons. One, it's a terrible film. Yeah, I know. It's so bad. And two, if you want to do a foreign samurai mm. in feudal Japan, there was an 
African samurai or an African American samurai, he's historically accurate. Okay. That would be far more interesting than Tom Cruise, the two foot nothing badger. <laughs> and dear God, that Irish accent from Billy Connolly. I thought his Irish <laughs> accent was bad in Colombo. That's a whole other <laughs> level of terrible there. But, uh, but yeah, oh, uh, I love to trigger Jerry. But yeah, the um, the Seven Samurai. There, there is a set of Seven Ronin for Test of Honor oh, uh, see, that, are, cool. that are based on a, a certain black and white film. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it would be ideal for that. Just have that, and then nothing but tons of bandits coming out of the countryside at you. Yeah, we, we kind of need to point Lloyd in this direction because I mean, like, I, I know years ago he said he wanted to do a samurai army, and then he forgot, and then he wanted to do it again, and then he forgot. He doesn't forget. <laughs> he just looks at the amount of stuff he needs and then goes, no, which is why we keep going, you know, Saga Feudal Japan will be ideal for you. Lloyd, start now, and you'll be ready for whenever it comes out. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. All right, anything else on this one, Ben? Uh, no, nothing more for that one. Uh, just to sort of reiterate that it's really cool to see uh, Sarissa doing some awesome stuff for a lot of different games right now. Uh, mm -hmm. They've done stuff. I'm going to reset the clock. They've done stuff for Burrows and Badger, which was really amazing and stuff like that. So it's really good to see them good looking times. towards uh, the re sort of rematch or the rebirth, I guess you'd say, of uh, of Test of Honor. Yeah. From, uh, uh, I think it's it Grey for Now Games at the moment. Yeah. And, Grey for uh, Now so, is yeah. responsible for the rule set. That's it, yes. Because he wrote it whenever. Um, he was working for warlords that that's his mm -hmm. so it's actually a combination of footsore games and footsore miniature and games mm -hmm. and grave for now games that's who are the, the designer mm -hmm. uh but yeah they've already done rome for gangs of rome mm -hmm. uh in a big way i know there's more mediterranean stuff coming for mortal gods um obviously the world war ii system is just absolutely fantastic from you know locomotives to apartment blocks to normandy townhouses so every time you turn around sarissa have something else just sort of cropping up yeah. and you know <laughs> it's a great way of getting a lot of stuff down the table very quickly mm. you just want to put the effort in i mean those are just scrubbing pads on top of those buildings there oh yeah, That's yeah, all, yeah. you know just hit poundland pick up a pack of six scrubbers glue yeah. them on and paint them brown bush thatch done yeah Jerry, quick question. The game we played in here one Sunday with us all playing Escape Convicts on a ship, was yeah, that Gangs of Rome? That was Gangs of Rome. Yeah, I want to play more of that. We can play more of that. Well, I mean, like, I, here's I've, a question for you. Where would I go for to get miniatures for that? Oh, there... it, it's it's all, that's Footsore. It's all Footsore. So, so right. Footsore Miniatures and Games mm -hmm. um, is the, the company that did it. And they, they comboed with Sarissa for Gangs of Rome. So yeah. Footsore supplied the miniatures, uh, which are two or three different sculptors so um stavros paul and steve i think have done the miniatures for it so there are starters there's a new starter set came out i'm going to say two months ago for mm -hmm. something which, like that yeah. which contains two small starter sets uh, mm -hmm. or factions so like three guys from each uh, a couple of bases of mobs because in rome it's all about the mobs mm -hmm. uh, a specific in color who's like a little guy who works in the bakery and then a, a big terrain piece uh -huh. um which is the bakery itself and a scenario specifically for that set uh, okay uh or you can just pick up individual yeah. blisters and, and do them yourself but i'm, I'm really i, I have a ton of stuff go. and anytime lloyd wants to build me room <laughs> he can because i've you know well, not, yeah. not got around to it jerry i tell you what with us doing the 3D printing stuff now, you find me some STL files for 3D print at Rome, I'll print it out for you, no problem. <laughs> there, there is one out there already, but to be fair, I've got the guts of 600 quids worth of wood from Sarissa from it. <laughs> I, I pretty much bought all of Rome when it came out. I, I just I, I measure Rome in feet, and at some point I will put them together. Currently, it's just like a log. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, gangs are ditching log. You're gonna scrap that to a Russian tank. <clears throat> you could, well, you know, you could put a Russian tank up on a couple of blocks of this stuff and take the tracks off. Uh, just yeah. leave it there. But yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, Sarissa, they're always bobbing up and doing something interesting. Uh, no, I'm, I may give that a look next month. Cool. All right, and else, Ben, for the news. Yeah, sure. So we've got two more stories. Uh, the first of these is from the guys at uh, Lucid Eye, who are doing some amazing stuff. And this is another one of their adventure modules uh, called The Curse of the Red Simians. So if you like the idea of playing some pulpy style games on the tabletop, you've got a new uh, adventure model for you to bring to the table. Now, we looked a little bit like at this company and this um, style of module in the past when they did one for Caverns of the Frog King, I believe it was called, mm. where they've done what's called the AYE system or Add Your Own Engine system. And that basically means that this book that you get here, I think they've done three now in total, 
basically gives you all of the story, all of the characters, all of the enemies you'll you'll be fighting, and all of the sort of like hooks and sort of like uh, tactics and teasers you might use as someone running the game or someone playing the game with another person to bring this to the tabletop. But then you can then add whatever game you want underneath this, and it should bolt onto pretty much anything. So if you wanted to use something like uh, Seven TV or Pulp Alley or something like that to play this game, you've got some really cool options here. This also means that it can be used for all playing games as well. So if you've got something like Savage Worlds, you can bring that in and play Savage Core on the tabletop of this. And of course, they've got their own system too. This one in particular uh, follows a band of four adventurers going up against the Red Simians and Red Poor Thunder Roar, who is the uh, very cool sort of main boss character that you get in this campaign and it kind of sort of feels to me a little bit like uh like a one of those one of those short films you would have seen, seen done by channel four or something on a sunday afternoon where it's like a little tiny episodic thing that plays out over an hour or an hour and a half and then they've done the one over i think it was the the temple of the cur- of, of the burning heart or golden heart last time and now they've gone off and done this one which is the curse of the red simians and i hope they do a lot more as well but it has that really cool awesome pulpy feel and it's a really good way to dive into this if there's a game system you already enjoy playing you don't want to have to bother to learn new rules but you've got all the miniatures and all the extra bits and pieces you need to play the game so a very very cool thing there indeed from from those guys on on that front they also uh, are now running a sort of separate entity as part of lucid eye which is looking towards developing miniatures that are pretty much for across the spectrum of games there's no real sort of like rhyme or reason to what they do. They just basically create what they think is really awesome and what their sculptor is really interested in doing. Uh, so this is called the Blades and Souls series. And one of the miniatures that we can see there is for the new Witchfinder model, which is very, very cool indeed. So this was released this week, but they've also done a, like a really cool um, Vampire Noble. They've done a Banshee as well in the past as well. So there's some really cool stuff coming out from those guys and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see them expand this range a little bit more. And it feeds into those people that love playing lots of skirmish games and uh, and lots of role-playing games as well so there's some really good stuff coming out of lucy's eye they're potentially one of my favorite uh, companies out there at the moment so yeah very cool <laughs> jerry be sad he just said use miniatures and role-playing games yeah i know it's it, he's wrong <laughs> he knows he's wrong but you know there's nothing i like the theater of the mind as well jerry don't worry ah, that's all right then i really like what the uh savage core set that they've done anyway yeah. the fact that they've now gone well we've got a really interesting concept for a game mm-hmm. but maybe you don't like savage core or you don't want to buy it and so grab just grab the the miniatures and grab their actual campaign or whatever it happens to be yeah. is really good i mean it's, savage core is nice anyway it's it's something we're seeing quite a bit of these days is you've got companies out there that are either just making really great rules that you can then use as the framework to canvas on whatever setting you want or you've got other companies going the other way where they're doing all the canvas work all the beautiful miniatures all the the background and the storyline and then saying well go grab a rule set that you think will fit it yeah and between um Lucid Eye and Antediluvian mm-hmm. miniatures, who do things like a not Doug McClure model and a not <laughs> uh, Peter Cushing model from yeah. you know the Lost World and things yeah. like that. You know, there's an awful lot of stuff out there. It'd be really interesting to see what else they do for the uh, the souls and mm-hmm. souls and blood, souls and blades and souls, blades and blades souls. And souls yeah. Um, because I really like the the vampire they've done. Mm-hmm. Really reminds me of um, Strad from Ravenloft, yes. mm. yeah. it, just from the sculpt and just, you know, you're looking at him and you're going, yeah, that, that could be Strad. That would be nice. So what, uh, would you like to do something with maybe 7 TV, go for like a, a bit of a Van Helsing movie thing going on or the original I well, Dracula? I, I, and Ravenloft, well, you could do whatever you want, really. And Ravenloft, Strad's the good guy mm. in a world, in a world where everybody's the bad guy, the yeah. vampire, theoretically, is kind of the good guy, <laughs> although he's still a bad guy. Wow. Um, so yeah, they were an interesting set of books anyway. But just the fact they're just doing nice, unique, generic models where you can just go, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. See, there's something I've wanted to do for a time is actually drop into some of the novels behind D and D, but I never know where to get started because I pick one up and I just feel completely lost. You know, I've Dragon, just Dragon Lance. Into, uh, Dragon Lance. How are you getting Dragon on with Dragon Lance? I am about three quarters of the way through the first book and already really enjoying it. The writing style is old to say the least. But other yes. than that, I'm really enjoying all the characters and I love what they've been doing with it. It has been written as if it was basically taken from someone's notes about a session, which I probably, I'm probably, i sure it probably was, actually. Um, but um, yeah, really, really cool stuff. I'm really enjoying Dragonlands. Now, so. is, is the writing style old or HP Lovecraft old? Oh, it's just old. It's no, not it's just that. Old, no, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Hickman and Wise do really nice characters as well. Mm-hmm. And so much so that they get really annoyed when people try to destroy their characters. 
Mm. I'm not surprised. You know, the the number of times I've seen authors turn down movie deals because it, they're sitting there going, "No Hollywood, no, you will ruin my it's, world." It's not even made. that. Uh, in one case, they transposed Lord Soth, uh -huh. the Knight of the Black Rose, who's like a essentially a, a, a Templar undead wraith thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. just no, another sort of tragic hero villain, uh, and they dropped him into Ravenloft, which is another DD setting that mm -hmm. Wise and Hickman haven't written. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you're in Ravenloft, you're in Ravenloft. You're, right. There's no getting out of there. It, right. You're trapped. And they went, yeah, we own that character. Please remove wow. him from Ravenloft now <laughs> in case we want to go back and do something with it. We're not having yeah. him trapped in your you know, garbage world playing second fiddle to uh, Lord Strahd. Because <laughs> you know, that's where Strahd's, you know. Uh, the, the king. King of the world, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it was nice them just going, we might not, we might. But regardless, you're not we allowed to break him. him. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that was that was a case of D and D being told not to uh, mess around by um, their own in, in their own background by their own <laughs> writers. So, yeah, yeah. That, I gotta say that, 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 that that's got to take some set of cojones oh, to turn yeah. around to Wizards of the Coast and go, no. I think it might have been TSR at that stage, but oh, regardless, yeah. you know. way back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> regardless. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the the final bit of news uh, that we're coming out with is for those people that like their casual card games, and this is that a new version of Love Letter is coming out uh, this year for people Ooh. to pick up at conventions and the like. So if you're going to Gen Con or Essen or something like that, you'll be able to pick this up. This is from the guys at Z-Man Games or Z-Man Games, we should probably call them. Uh, and this new version of the game features revamped artwork. Uh, they sort of added a little bit more of a diverse cast into the mix which i thought was really cool they've created better favor tokens for you to use as well so instead of little tiny red cubes that will always get lost you've got some really nice plastic ones instead and they've added two new additional characters into the game as well so you've got the chancellor who will be in charge of drawing and discarding a lot of cards and sort of messing around with the kind of meta a little bit more and you've also got the spy which allows you to take a very different sort of approach to the game if you're the only person who has a spy at the end of the round you'll be able to get a favor token on top of other ones as well they won't be winning any uh, any favour from the princess herself because they don't have a very, very high value but it sort of gives you a different option to go down this also means with the addition of two new characters into the mix that you can take it from uh, a group of four up to a group of six playing the game which I thought was really cool because one of the big things about Love Letter there was one of those casual games that you basically either played down the, the pub or before another game or if you had too many people etc so it's really good to see that they've expanded the party size to include a lot more people so yeah new version of Love Letter and us a classic if you haven't played it before make sure you pick it up so, yeah. This is one of those games that I would actually play while traveling. Yes. yes. You know, if I'm yeah. on the train, if I'm waiting at the airport, something like that, you would just sit down and start going at it because it's really fun. I do want one character added, though. The Squire. Squire? Yeah, worth of zero, and if you draw this card, you instantly lose this round because you have been friend-zoned. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that must refer to something that the kids know that I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yes, quite. You know, but on the plus side, the second best Lando Calrissian is there as the prince. Right? He is, yeah. Is, that just looks like Donald Glover. I don't know, that, that's kind of got a Will Smith vibe to it. No, his ears aren't big enough. <laughs> harsh. It's, you know, a little bit harsh, but I think even Will himself would suggest that his ears look like the car doors open driving down the street. <laughs> so, yeah. And suddenly a cease and desist wings in. Ah, no, he'll be fine. <laughs> Will Smith loves it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He he made he made Wild Wild West. I think we can we can roast him as much as we the, like. The so. wiki wiki yeah, yeah. wah wah. Yeah, wiki, no, wiki, see, wah, I wah. thought you were about to say he mailed me. <laughs> <laughs> ben, everything you say is fine. Love Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. I've got personal connections with Smithy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boys in the hood. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's us for news then. Yeah, Ben. Yes, that's all the news. Yeah. Okay. Time for a bit of an announcement then for everybody. So, you know the way we like doing our hobby challenges here on Beasts of War? I'm aware of your work, yes. Yes. I think it's time for another one. Okay. Now, uh, so we are... I send out one piece of room to all the community members. <laughs> and they it. Send it back to me. Yes, yes. yes. No, unfortunately, no. Uh, this one, we're in spring, and... We're not going Allegedly. to go for exactly the spring theme this time. We're going okay. to go for more of a spring cleaning theme. So the challenge this time is to dive into your hobby room and find an old project that you want to break out, dust off, either finish off or take to the next level. 
So that can be Never. a gaming table you were going to work on, an army that you were really enjoying, but just, you know, something new and shiny came along and you just were wanting to work on that instead. Uh, you know, so even if it's just an old display miniature that you, you know, maybe it's an old favorite of yours, you haven't seen it in ages, and you just want to give it some tender loving care and actually revisit it with the new skills you've got. Clever. Yeah. So before and after pictures then? Yeah, so obviously once you have to bring it out, you know, looking crusty with all of the cobwebs and crap on it, and then Botox it. <laughs> Not exactly. No. Ben, ben, how would you handle this one? Uh, yeah, so I think I'd probably dive back into my collection of, well, let me just think. I have a lot of dwarves sitting Ooh. around, and there are still regiments that I have not completed from my 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy Army that are, like, base-coated and or potentially even worse than that. I think in some cases I've sort of sprayed them maybe twice or something. That's That's, oh my god, that's... That's foul. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I would go probably go back to some of those old dwarves, break them out, and now I've learned a lot more sort of new painting techniques and got a little bit better with the brush and all that mm. kind of thing. I'd go back and sort of revamp a lot of the characters maybe from my dwarven army. I think that would be pretty cool. Mm. Um, so, yeah, start up a project and get stuck in there. That would be really, really awesome. Yeah. Mm. You um, could use them in Saga. I could then use them in Saga, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, we're going to run this the same as all the, the challenges we've done before, so there are going to be four final categories. So there is the junior category for our under 16s out there. So, you know, you might not have the biggest backlog of stuff that you've moved on from, but just pick something and show your progress. Mm -hmm. You're then going to have the best tutorial, actually someone showing, here's what I had done, here's what I've been aiming for, here's where I'm going through the steps of what I'm doing. You then obviously got the best executed, which is just, oh my God, here is the most gorgeous thing here, there. And the best idea, because you, know, you could actually find something, and like you were saying to Ben there, refactor it into something new. Oh yeah. So if your idea is to take something old and make it something new, you can do that as well. The prizes are four fifty quid gift vouchers for the OTT Pro Store. Jerry, I know you have... A magnificent Aladdin's cave. Is there anything in particular you grab out? I'm going oh. to say you can't win now, but is there anything you would grab out? I mean, there's so little because everything is completely done and dusted to satisfactory <laughs> standard that I enjoy. Boxed. But yeah, <laughs> brand new inbox. <laughs> um, dude, dude, seriously, whenever you hit like 70, you're just going to go to a toy fair and just make a mint. I, I think it's adorable that you think my kidneys and liver will keep me going till 70. <laughs> well, hang on, well hang on. we have seen they are now 3D printing organs. Well, that is true, and I can really do with them. If you need better. a new one, you know, just sell some of your old like Ste stuff. I thought you said steel one there. <laughs> no, no. Um, I actually have a, I have a Perry's sculpted Roman Imperial Roman army from Foundry. Yeah, it's all lead, all lead, yeah. gorgeous. Uh, which I based up for Warhammer Ancient Battles some time ago and sprayed them black. Mm-hmm start them i then kind of got mm, sidetracked I, I never got around to doing an opposing force for them mm -hmm. uh so they more or less just sat there unpainted mm -hmm. for quite some time and i dug them out a little while ago and did a unit for kings of war out mm -hmm. of them so i did one one trip of archers one 20-man regiment of uh, foot guard and a war machine mm -hmm. so ballista but i have another five of those to do plus the Praetorians, plus my light Gallic Cav, and my um, heavy uh, cataphract, mm -hmm. right, and yeah. some elephants. Okay. I know I shouldn't have elephants, but it was a fantasy army that it was going to be <laughs> once I decided to break it out of historic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I could probably, since I've got a seventh of it done, mm -hmm. do the rest of that. Yeah. You see, the thing, the thing I was just thinking about it then as you were saying that, looking back to one of those armies that maybe was a, a lot older than what I was, because my, like my, my dwarf army was from sort of like 6th edition through to 8th edition, so it's not overly old, yeah. really, and it involves quite a lot of the new models, but if I looked back towards some of, because I've got a box that's just basically full of my old Mordheim models, maybe I could Ooh. go back to the time before I even considered what wash was and what highlighting is, yeah. and maybe go through those and touch those up, I think that could be pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that would be nice, you could use them in Rangers of Shadow Deep. I could then use them in Rangers of Shadow Deep. There's so I, many new options. <laughs> and, and there's a lovely thing coming out for Rangers as well, a new um, scenario yeah. book coming. There are, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, there's, there's one thing I have, and it's from the very first army I ever had, which was my original Space Marine army. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, yeah. 
And mm -hmm. I swear, this thing looks like I painted it with a three-inch brush and Dulux. Nice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say it's okay to do this because it's what I may do with this. So it is the original metal Venerable Dreadnought. You remember the really tall one with like the, the big flat panels and stuff on it? Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's painted black and gold and it's horrible. And my painting skill is a lot different than it used to be. So I think I may actually strip that down. I was going to say, would you take a hammer and bolster to it and remove the paint? <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. And that's the nice thing about finding stuff that you've painted when you were just starting and it's yeah. as thick as champ on it. Oh, yeah. Because it's so easy to strip well, in it, comparison to <sighs> thin layers of stuff. You know, I, it just comes away know, in lumps. I sold that army to Sam here in the office and I think he had the majority of it in debt all for a year. Right. It still didn't take all the paint off. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I told you, Dulux, that stuff does not come off. Man. But wow. I'm, I, I would like to say, if it's something that you just want to completely redo from the ground up, don't be scared in this project to say, I want to strip this down oh, yeah. and see what I can do from scratch. Still want to see what people have done to begin with. Oh, where oh, yeah, where, yeah, where, yeah, where did you start? Where, yeah. did, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> I think I believe what we'll do with this then is we'll make sure it's in all set up in the project system and there'll be like a drop down menu for you to sort of pick the spring cleaning challenge or whatever yeah. we're going to yeah. we're going to name yeah. it. So that'll be cool. Yeah, so, yeah. and I, I do want to give people plenty of time on this one because you know it might take you a week or two to clear out your attic. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it might take me a week or two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Jerry, if you need a hand, you know. Uh, I'd need some sort of massive skip brought in, probably. <laughs> yeah, you can call it my apartment, because I'm sure I'd probably look at it and go, ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny. <laughs> All right, I think that is enough for the, the hobby challenge. Get your comments in below, everybody. Tell us what projects do you think you could be doing in this one? What would you really like to drag out from your collection? What's that, that old favourite of yours that you maybe pull out now and go, yeah? Yeah. 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 All right, Ben. Kickstarter yes. Kickstarters. Yeah, so uh, the first of the Kickstarters we're going to be looking at from uh, this week is from the guys at Burning Games and Big Child Creative. And this is their Kickstarter for Corball. Uh, so Corball is their sci-fi sports game that's uh, sort of featured in Zero Gravity, which is pretty awesome. And it has a really cool mechanic where the board underneath the players shifts as you're playing because you're in space. So yes, things do never never stay in the same place, which I thought was really cool. Uh, the game features a whole bunch of different teams. I think it's four in, uh, in the sort of core set. There are all 35 millimeter miniatures that are made of PVC plastic, so they're all pre-assembled and ready to go. And they're all in really cool dynamic poses as well, as hopefully you can see on the Kickstarter page there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the game is meant to be uh, tactically very quick and interesting to play. Uh, it's all about sort of not just playing what you can see at the moment, but also sort of anticipating errors and all the kind of hazards that come up as well because as i say that board is always changing so you might end up running into you know asteroids and all kinds of crazy things like that uh it's a really cool sort of new take on the idea of a sci-fi sports game obviously a lot of them we normally see tend to still be played in like a pitch or something like that so it's really good to see someone sort of branching out and do something a little bit different this game just completely reminded me of one uh, a sort of like a side activity you could do in final fantasy 10 i believe it was where you'd play underwater in that game but you're effectively still playing football whereas this one obviously takes things to space which is pretty awesome here um it actually plays with between two to four players as well so you don't just have to play this as a one-on-one -on -one venture you can also throw uh, four people into the mix which i thought was a really really cool idea making it a little bit more accessible for a lot more people to get stuck down to the tabletop uh but yeah core ball sounds fantastic we've done a, a couple of videos on it already uh, we've talked to them at convention and we've done some stuff in the studio with them learning about the creative process and that kind of thing as well. So if you like the idea of playing some Cobol, uh, then make sure to go and check it out on Kickstarter. So, yeah. We actually did have the good fortune to do a, a Let's Play with these guys, which was mm -hmm. lots of fun. Because mm -hmm. the way you're actually building your team before you begin, each team is sort of weighted a certain direction. So being really good at handling the ball, being really good at tackling, you know, being really good at hacking and locking someone down. You'll have that core team and then you're picking in essentially neutral mercenaries. characters mercenaries yes and they sort of fill up those other slots and make up for some of the lacks so it's it's really interesting to see just the dynamics of a game because you're actually trading people in and out as you're playing through and you know if you get rammed badly into like an asteroid or something you know you might get knocked out you know you've lost so much momentum you've just fallen behind everybody like a bug hitting the windshield of a car <laughs> I, I do like playing the bull bugs funnily enough one of their characters he he could land the right in an asteroid and just not care so what he can actually wow. do is grapple somebody 
grab them by the back of the helmet and just face ground them along the asteroid. <laughs> and he kept trying that. How did that work out for you? You have to watch that and see. Yeah. That's coming soon. Freaking hackers. Uh, <laughs> what I will say is the, the core box is only for two people. Mm. Oh, is it only for two people? It's only for I two. It was for four. No. Okay. There, there's an expansion that will add the extra two. Oh, uh, so, so you can buy you can buy the extra teams in. But the, the core set has two starting teams and mm. then two sets of mercenaries and now the, the mercenaries are essentially the same for mm. all the the different teams so there'll be two sets but colored mm. uh one to match each team in the the core set so yeah, if yeah. you both want to take a I'm trying to remember Striker. the names um safety i mm. think was one of the safety the guys the so if you both want to have safety you can both have them and it'll be color coded to your team yeah and then when the other teams are added they come in other colors and will also come with the mercenaries yeah so uh, cool. so there's a amount of drafting as well that you can do and, and bits and bobs so yeah i remember chatting to the guys they said they were really wanting to push like a, a competitive play aspect to this for like tournament play yeah and it does feel like it would be really really good to play on tournament because it's not just random you have okay i know this team i know what he's going to try and build to sort of buff up his lacks hmm. i'll try and build my team to counter that a bit and yeah. you can be really deeply tactical about it i just like that going in and out like that yeah, yeah it just yeah, amuses yeah, yeah, me yeah, yeah. the floating board it's great yeah. it's a really nice concept yeah. for actually doing a essentially a moving playing pitch because yeah. yeah. the concept behind this is you are launched from a cannon in space into an asteroid field and now you're going to play the game yeah so you're always moving forward yeah so even though that's the same one going in and out and in and out I should be swapping out for another one that uh, yeah. you random you shuffle them. Yeah, you have like a yeah. deck. Yeah, so there's a deck of there's a deck of terrain coming at you. Mm -hmm. So every turn's a new playing field. It's all good, clean family fun. Yeah. Well, one of the interesting things I'd seen about this is that they actually they've taken some of the mechanics that worked really really well in their I think it was their role playing game called Faith. Uh, so if you like what existed in that they've taken some of those things over in sort of small mechanical um, ways into into core ball. so make sure to check this one out definitely mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. what's the next one uh, so the next one is from the guys at painting polygons and also steamport games and this is cats and catacombs for those people that like cats moggies and dungeons and dragons you've now got two things smushed together because that's a cool thing that definitely happens nowadays uh, they've done it before with dogs and dun doggies and dungeons which was very very yes. cool indeed and uh, this came out with a very awesome looking plastic well pvc set that had a whole bunch of dogs and a whole bunch of different breeds and a whole bunch of different classes for you to use in your role-playing games well now because you can't have dogs without cats they have done a new kickstarter campaign that you can see here where you get a similar range of different classes and cat breeds for you to use in your games of D, &D as well um all the cats that you see there uh, will come in the same sort of style as you might have seen with uh, Doggies in Dungeons, where you've got that sort of like set of, of coloured plastics that you can use basically straight out of the box, or you can paint them up to your heart's content, a little bit like you can see on the Kickstarter campaign there as well. All of it has been sort of like created with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition in mind. Um, so you can either use them as cats that are now that are in the same world as humans and half orcs and and, and orcs uh, uh, and elves and all that kind of thing or you could have it so it's a world entirely just habited by animals if you really wanted to i think i know where my vote would go for that one as well as rules and sort of a companion to help sort of um set up games set within a world like this or in sort of like uh with sort of like helpful tips to play these kind of characters you've also got a uh, adventure to play through which is called the lair of the necromancer Yes, we did see so, that. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering exactly how to pronounce yeah. that without it sounding yeah. dumb. So you've got a uh, really awesome. cool... Sounds dumb by that. Exactly. So you've got a really cool story to get stuck into there, and I believe they've also included a whole bunch of bits and pieces in there for you to sort of set up on the tabletop. So it's got a really cool tile setup and all kind of things like that, and maybe we'll look to see them doing some stuff, interesting things with uh, the, that in the future, potentially as well. Uh, but yeah, some really cool stuff there from the guys at Painting Polygon, sort of stepping out and doing something that I think a lot of people have already pretty much asked for. And then the next thing that everyone was talking about was, where are they going to go next? What animals will they do next? And I think they're going to do something. I would, I would love them to do something with bears. Bears and bastions. There we go. We'll do bears and bastions. That will be definitely what we do next. I don't so, know. Yeah. See, I'm I'm a dog person. That when they did the dog one, I was totally sold. I loved every last one of them. I was so sad that I couldn't jump in on it. I'm not a cat <laughs> person. What? Outrageous. Cats. Cats don't like me for some reason. Just oh. I've never met the cat that actually likes me a lot. Well, the dog. The dogs have just landed with Kickstarter. Yes, they have. Yeah. So, um, because I was watching a friend 
opening one of those up the other day mm. and uh and the, the set looked lovely mm -hmm. so everything came in a little plastic tray with you know each individual little slotted dog yeah um so yeah my, my, my fingers are very much crossed that hopefully the quality of the final critical role miniatures and uh, and stuff that comes out from those guys as well but will be very good as well mm. I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and waiting till summer for that box set to come out so yeah very cool <laughs> Why are the rats wearing rat skulls? Because he's the necro meowser. The cat is controlling the mouse, the mice, and the rats. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Saturday morning cartoon in a kitchen. I know, I know. It's awesome. It's like samurai pizza cats, but you know. Oh, God. Yeah, resulted. Ow. <laughs> samurai pizza cats. Uh, Meow. No, there was another one as well. What was that? I don't know. Uh, there was the one where there were the cats that flew fighter jets. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what it was called now. Man. Uh, I, I'm unaware of their work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I remember it. Obviously, it, was it wasn't too high brilliant. art like the Samurai Pizza Cats. No, Similar art style. Yeah. Which only ran anyway. for a year. But, you know, they managed to squeeze 54 episodes out in that year it ran. That's well done. Uh, that's, you know, God bless them. Anyway, yeah. yeah so, cats. Yeah. I, I really like it. It's, I think it's The idea is cool. The idea is cool. All right, next uh, up, Ben. Yeah, so the final Kickstarter is one that uh, Jerry showed me on to uh, for his love of Fogu models. And this is them bringing Fort Hard Knocks to Kickstarter. So this is a new, big, chunky, 28 mil post-apocalyptic fortress for you to both defend and besiege on the tabletop as the wastelands expand. And you need somewhere to hole up. You've now got a really awesome new fortress for you to get stuck into. Uh, this is cast in resin. And it's been made so that it's easy to put together and assemble on the tabletop. So it's not made up of hundreds of different components or everything like that. It's just big, sizable blocks that you smash together when you're building your big, awesome bastion. As well as that, they, uh, well, as well as the sort of core set that involves just sort of almost like the, the walls and the gates, you've also got an additional sort of option with this Kickstarter where you can add in some big tall towers as well. And you can also see some of the work uh, that Fogu models have done on some of their past projects as well. So they don't just do stuff for the post-apocalypse. They also do stuff for the Dark Ages and all that kind of thing as well. So, really? Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's as if Jerry might have some of their stuff. <laughs> uh, do you know what I want to do with this? Uh, you have two choices. You can either go post-apocalyptic, like Fallout, or you can go Gork and Morka. Yes. It I would make a, it would make a, a third fantastic option for you. orc fort. Yeah, I have a third option for yeah. you. Lay it on a sea mat and do Waterworld. Oh, you could do that as well. You could do Waterworld. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. It would, yeah. it would look pretty badass, yeah. So I know, because uh, I was talking to him briefly mm. about it, so the the two the two sets i mean the big one there i think is is like 45 centimeters square with the towers yeah but there is like a one pound pledge where if you don't want the full sets mm. you can just go i just want a tower and the uh -huh. towers come in three different sizes yeah, or you can go cool. for no he hasn't got them done yet but there's a um destroyed walls so each of the wall sections are just i think each of the wall sections are unique or right. if, they're, if not unique there's like 14 different fronts and 14 different right. tops and you'll get, like that, right? you get a mix and it's just literally front top sort of yeah. locked together so is there's... this some he's casting and sending out to folks or is this like an sdl that you're fit to no print, no or... it, it, this, no this will be cast this, this, is, cast. this, is, okay. this is proper stuff <laughs> uh because i've got a load of those barrels and stuff already from um he did something similar for the battle at the farm mm -hmm. with the big blue oil drums essentially you know the, the big yeah. plastic barrels they look great yeah uh, so just yeah. i was gonna say just to say the kickstarter page we're looking at right now is the draft page but it will be live uh by yeah. the time this comes out so, yeah it, okay. it will have been live yesterday at which point we may have got an <laughs> editor to put in the live one who knows probably not but you know uh, yeah so it's, make them it, do work Jerry. It's, it's, make um, them work crack that whip <laughs> i really like the stuff it's really characterful mm. it's really chunky it's really cool. and it stands up to a lot of play mm. because it's made by gamers and a lot of that i don't know if uh curious painted these there's a guy on, on our site who paints a lot a lot of his stuff i believe he did the bottom uh image there with the yeah. old space marines i think it was yeah right i think, yeah. I think they're his yeah. yeah so yeah so that you may even see some of that stuff pop up in amongst the project logs as well but yeah so it's just i really really like it i really like it for sci-fi look there's orcs attacking it seems wrong Mm. Seems like the human should be outside and the orc should be inside that, but you know, mm. it's oh. the future. Who knows? Yeah. When the school of hard knocks has just mm. gone a bit, bit skew f, you end up with a fort of hard knocks. <laughs> yeah. No, there was. Uh, you know what? This would actually work really great for is actually doing yourself a mini game 
of 40k so something yes. for kill team but there was a novel i read recently which was dante him actually mm -hmm. becoming an initiate of the the blood angels and there was one scene in that book where they took two groups of aspirants out put them on essentially an island with a dry lake bed around it at either end was a fort that you would imagine like this and it was essentially capture the flag that they were fit they to kill each other capture the flag <laughs> yes <laughs> in the future Actually, think, well it was capture the flag but it was a skull all right well that's, that makes sense 40k Make, it makes an awful lot of sense for yeah, 40k but yeah. you, you could do something like that for this do yourself a nice little like, mini game for a convention or something uh, yeah the, the possibilities are essentially what you can think of Eat. yeah like so. all gaming yeah well ben final thoughts yeah, some really cool stuff coming out from these guys. Uh, these guys, as I say, uh, Fogo Moles do some amazing terrain. If you haven't seen the stuff that uh, Jerry's worked on, hopefully you'll be able to check that out at some point. Uh, he, he's done some really good stuff with their existing stuff for the Dark Ages. Mm. And uh, if that quality is anything to go by, then hopefully this uh, new fort is going to be equally as cool. So, yeah, some good stuff there. I think my favorite would have to, however, be this week, Cats and Catacombs. I think I'd have to go for Cats and Catacombs because animals... D and D, it's just a match made in heaven, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. For for me, because I've actually had the chance to play it and know how good the game system is, it has to be core ball. Mm -hmm. that Matt? It, it's it's a really cleverly designed game. The guys have thrown their heart and souls into it, and it's just really cool. <laughs> Worth a look. Yeah, I I like all three of them. Uh, so I'm going to say all three mm, of them. I know I'm going to be good. <laughs> I'm going to say the Terracotta Warriors, which aren't any of these three, but I know we're on Kickstarter at the moment. Go and find that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's wrap out the show. Uh, just a quick reminder for everybody, we are going to be bringing you our Hobby Spring Challenge very, very soon. The, the outline for it is very simple. It's Hobby Spring Cleaning. So go find yourself something from your collection that you want to go back and rework on you can paint over what you've already done you can strip and repaint you can maybe finish off a gaming table that you were working on way back when adding in the new skills and stuff make sure and post initial photos of what it is at the moment and then move on from there now uh, anybody who has won a prize here on on tabletop make sure and come across to check and see if you have won on the main website on tabletop.com there is a drop down menu when you where you can go to the claim a prize form if you scroll down there is just a big list of everybody who has won and is still eligible to claim a prize myself ben and jerry will move on here and we will see you again tomorrow morning for the weekender xlbs if you don't know who the weekender xlbs is basically an additional show on top of the weekender where myself jerry ben probably warren and lloyd are all going to be sitting down sharing some of our hobby time with you and having a chat about just in general what's been happening what we've been enjoying in the world and maybe something with a bit more of a meaty topic here and there if you're wanting to go for that come across and join us on ontabletop.com we'll move on we'll see you again tomorrow <laughs> i'm hoping they're going to leave that a little <laughs> And at the end there, <laughs> that was good. Go that was the best part. <laughs> See that, editors? Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.